Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Purdy Insurance. Visit Purdy Insurance on Market Street in Sunbury or visit online at purdyinsurance.com. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Good afternoon, everybody. It is the Steve Jones Show on a Super Bowl Monday. News Radio 1070 WKOK. Matt Catrillo here with you. Steve will soon be there from the Sunbury Motors studio. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. And online at sunburymotors.com. And like every Monday show, we're brought to you by our good friends at Purdy Insurance, Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com. Home, auto, life, business, all your insurance needs. They got you covered. See them at their office when it's safe on Market Street in Sunbury or go to purdyinsurance.com. Tom Brady continuing to solidify his legacy. I know, of course, he's the MVP. Fifth one in his career. Gets a seventh Super Bowl ring. That was definitely his best game of all of of the season. But again, what's I think what my biggest takeaway from this game is how shocking it was to see the Chiefs get completely outcoached the way they did. That was my number one factor, Steve, looking into this game is coaching. In what way? And that's why I, I picked the Chiefs to win this I'll game. Co- I coached in what way? What way were they outcoached? Well, I, mean, I, I think I think their it, offensive it, game plan was pretty atrocious. Um, clock management in the second half was not great. Um, no, this is the this is I, I talk about this all the time, and it, it, it really comes into play in a story like this. The key to the game was execution. Okay, Todd Bowles. Okay, how did he outcoach him? He outcoached him by being smart and simple. Now, how could he be? How could he be smart and simple in what he did? Because his front four dominated the line of scrimmage. Okay? There's nothing complicated about what they did. They played two eye safeties, and they dropped seven into coverage because Todd Bowles blitzed. You know How many, how many times did Todd Bowles blitz in the game? It was this very limited, bl- which is this guy, credit. This guy, this guy blitzes all the time. He blitzed five times in the game. Okay, now why could he blitz five times in the game? Because his defensive front, because of because the fact the Chiefs had to change sixty percent of their offensive line. I mean, sixty percent. There's only five positions. You had to change three positions to play the game because of the Fisher injury. And he saw immediately in the game that Barrett. And Paul couldn't be stopped playing the game. He saw it right away. Could not be stopped playing the game. Okay? And there's nothing Kansas City could do strategically to stop it. I mean, what could they do? They could maybe roll him out, but you're rolling into Barry. You are roll him out the other way. You're rolling into Paul because they could not control those two guys. Which goes back to what we talked about last week. Okay. We talk strategy all the time. It's all about matchups. Okay. Your strategy has to be based on your matchups. Kansas City had nobody that could match up with Jason Pierre Paul and had nobody that could match up with Shaq Barrett. I mean, who's going to do it? Then on the offensive side, for, for Brady, um, 
Brady didn't do much adventurous in the game. The, the touchdown pass to Gronkowski, the second one, was a fabulous Brady throw. Right? I thought the touchdown pass he threw to Brown, it was short, but it was a really good throw. For the most part, Brady played a good game. He played a good game. He didn't play a great, a great, phenomenal 500-yard passing day. Brady, as usual, played very smart, and he did what he thought his team needed to win the game. But what was Kansas City supposed to do strategically? What? What were they supposed to do strategically because they couldn't control four people? Here's one play I'll give you. It was, I think it was on the field goal drive, or one of the field goal drives, where they started with a screen pass to the left, and they had a double team, I think it was on JPP, where they they were able to double team and they worked towards the double team to take him out of the play, and they got a big chunk gain out of that. I was missing some of that creativity at the line of scrimmage. There wasn't a lot of window dressing to kind of offset the, the the lineman a little bit. You can't um, you can't you can't window dress what you can't block. You can't. They could not block these people. Remmers is a right tackle. Now he's gonna switch over and he's gonna go be a left tackle. Okay? While he's a guard who's now outside playing tackle. The only guy who's actually playing his proper spot, even then it was a little bit different, is Wisniewski, who normally is a left guard playing right guard. I mean, it's it's a different set of foot movement, a different arm movement. You know, suddenly Remmers, instead of using his right arm to extend, he's now going to be become a left-handed player on the left-hand side to make that contact over there. Same thing with Wiley, who's now going to go out and he's going to use his hands on Barrett. But they just outquick them. And it's just, it's too much to overcome. And that's why it was the one thing they had, it was the big advantage to Tampa Bay and the Green Bay game, was that Green Bay with Bakhtiari out had to shuffle their line. And I made the same comparison a week ago that it was going to be the, the biggest part of this game. Well, guess what? It was the biggest part of the game. I mean, uh, when, you can only, when you can get pressure and make a guy run for his life with four guys... What magical strategy do you have? Right. It was, it was, this was no secret that this was going to be Kansas City's biggest challenge. There's no doubt about that. But there were plenty of times this year where you'd see a play like that where they would try either a, a screen pass or a, or a toss sweep or something had, like that to the opposite side, and then they would block the other had, side to take them out. But they had Eric Fisher when you're talking about that. And they had Remmers playing right tackle when you were talking about that. Now you got a guy from right to left, a guard from guard to tackle, now a backup guy that wasn't with the team when the season began. That's your lineup. And Tampa Bay exploited it. They got Barrett back. They had Barrett and JPP. Okay, They got Vita Vea back two weeks ago, now two weeks healthier, to go with Indomitian Sue. And that's that's that was the key to the whole thing. Next gen, I'm not, I could usually care less about the next gen stats, but did you see the number that they put out on Patrick Mahomes? You know how many yards he he was running with the ball yesterday? That one I didn't see. Four hundred ninety-seven yards between scrambles gaining his own yards and running for to keep plays alive and wow. the throw and the throws he made oh, oh yeah it was uncanny god i could i mean the the throw that pringle made, pringle by the way makes a two of the best, the two best catches in the game didn't count pringle's exactly. catch in the back was phenomenal and chris godwin's catch was phenomenal Yeah. Neither one counted. They were out of the, they were out either out of bounds or out of the end zone. But he makes that throw to Pringle. Like, how do he make that throw? Then he makes an even better throw to I don't know who was it Williams or whatever. It yeah, was. I think it, it was, was Williams, it, and he was like almost on the ground, and he basically side armed upwards, and it was almost a touchdown. I mean, how the heck do you make those plays? It was phenomenal, but that but he had to do it because it was constantly scrambling to keep plays alive because they were in the backfield. So it this a 
it's not coaching. It's not scheme. It is matchups. Okay, matchups make the scheme pay off. Matchups make the coaching pay off. Tampa Bay had the right matchups at the right spots. Kansas City couldn't control them. Could not control them. They won the game. This game was absolutely won in the trenches. Fournette could run because of the way they blocked up front. Brady could throw because Brady had time to throw the ball because of what they did up front. This was old fashioned one in the trench football on both sides. I mean, that's where the game was won. And, and it's amazing how smart you look when that's how it plays out. When you can get pressure with four guys, and Todd Bowles, to his credit, being a very smart coach, realized right away, um, let's not tinker with this. Okay, They can't stop this. Let's just keep doing what we're doing. Two high safeties, because they had to take away Hill. Two high safeties and four guys rushing. The other five, we'll put them in spots. And Levante David, whom I always, when he was at Nebraska, I really liked, did, it for the most part, a good job on Kelsey. And Kelsey had one of those mixed days. He dropped a couple he should have caught. His Kansas City was a step off. Now, the officiating, which has nothing to do with the outcome. Um, that was embarrassing for a Super Bowl. I, I sat there and went, what, what are we watching here? You know what my definition of pass interference is. Okay, Pass interference to me has to be something that prevents the possibility of a catch. Okay? If the ball is overthrown, what are you interfering with? Mike Evans cannot catch that ball. No way. In fact, Mike Evans isn't even going to be close to catching that ball. Okay? Isn't even going to be close. Gronkowski, a Tyron Matthew. Okay? A cardboard cutout had a better shot at getting the ball than Gronk did. You don't throw a you don't throw a penalty. It had nothing to do with the play. Nothing. It has nothing to do with the result. It was going to be an incomplete pass. And then Matthew, what's the default call in the NFL? Holding. The default default call is defensive holding. Matthew picked off the ball on a deflected ball. It's a big play in the game. Get taken away on a defensive holding call. It's like, geez. Well, Kansas City's a handsy team to begin with. I mean, they are. And they got caught being a handsy team. But the two interference calls, I sat back and went, what are you calling here? You can't catch that ball. You got to look at the, I mean, you have to have the guts as an official to look around and say, uncatchable, you interfere with nothing. Okay, now if you thought maybe he'd get his fingertips on it, okay. Now I can go by the call. But the, the, the ball was, in fact, those, you know, on a day where for the most part Brady threw great footballs, those are the two of the worst th- balls he threw all day, and he, he got he got 50 yards out of it. What? Neither one was close. The one to Evans wasn't close, and the one to Gronk wasn't close. And they got pass interference calls. He sat back and went, um, guys, 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 here, okay, let's be invisible here. Let's be invisible. Now, that didn't win or lose the game. That had nothing to do with it. But as a side, it's like, guys, I think we need to ask better from our officials than this. Okay, I'm going to get to what was the coaching move of the weekend. Now I'm going to talk about actual coaching, Matt. Okay, okay, I'll talk about that in a moment. Here on News Radio 1070 WKOK, brought to you by Purdy Insurance. Hi, this is Season from Purdy Insurance. 2021 has begun, and this is the perfect time to make sure you're protecting what matters most. Whether it be you, your family, or your business, we have the experience and knowledge you need to help navigate through the process. Our office remains available to service our new and current clients by phone at 570-286-5855, by email, and by appointment. Purdy Insurance, what can we do for you? All right, today's show brought to you by Purdy Insurance, Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com. Now I'm going to tell you the coaching move of the weekend that was responsible in helping his team win the game. Right? So which part of the Super Bowl was that in? 
I'm going to let you guess. Hmm. How about none? All right, so let's go to Friday <laughs> night. So let's go to Friday night. Penn State's playing Maryland. It is a 53-50 game. Uh, we're, what, inside of, I think there's 32 seconds left, something like that. And Penn State, here's the rule. The rule is, is as follows. It used to be that any time the ball got knocked out of bounds before you reach the midcourt stripe, the 10-second count would start over, which when you think back on it, you know, was a really kind of dumb. It really penalized the defense. So they changed the rule. And if the ball's knocked out of bounds and, say, you're three seconds into, into it, you only have now seven seconds to get the ball in and move up the floor. But you get the full 10 seconds if there's a timeout. Oh. So Penn State is bringing the ball to the floor, and they're in trouble. And Maryland knocks the ball out of bounds. Penn State had seven seconds left to get the ball over the midcourt stripe. They get the ball in, and I think Miles Dredd had it. And Dredd is in trouble. Right? Trouble. And that clock we can see, right? Because, you know, we're doing the quick math in our heads as to where, where it's supposed to be. I think, uh, well, it may have been actually because it was a, the 30 second clock was still available. Dick and I can see it's like a 22, 21. Jim Ferry calls a timeout from the bench. Brilliant. Because guess what? Not only did he save his team from turning the ball over by passing it, he saved his team from turning the ball over at a 10 count because by calling timeout, he got the full 10-second count back to get over the timeline again, which meant Maryland was now forced to foul on the inbounds, which they fouled Jamari Wheeler, and to his credit, he went to the line, hit both, and Penn State won at 55-50. So, Matt, when you talk about coaching, right there was a coach that, A, knew the rule, knew the situation, observed it, and because he kept his poise and knew the rule, he made it work to his team's advantage. Absolutely correct. That is, okay, you want to talk... Oh, what a phenomenal coaching move, execution. Look, a lot of times coaching moves are based on execution. That was a coaching move that was made by a coach that saved his team's bacon. Had nothing to do with the play. He saved his team's bacon at that point. They they, they couldn't get the ball over midcourt. They were in a three-point game. They were one second away from turning the ball over on a 10-second count, and their coach, because he knew the rule, Bang, called timeout and bought his team 10 new seconds, which, of course, at this point, Maryland could ill afford to let them have the 10 seconds. They had to get the ball in and just foul as quickly as possible. Okay? But that was a coaching move that strategically helped his team win the game. Now, that's a coaching move right there. All right. Now, it's also a coaching move to look at Jason Pierre-Paul and Shaq Barrett and say, you're way better than those two guys. You just keep doing it. We'll drop the other seven guys back. Well, you want to talk about a, a guy, about a coach doing something that helps your team win the game? Because he understands time, score, situation, and rules. Watch that happen on Friday night. Jim Ferry, a lot of credit. Today's show brought to you by Purdy Insurance. Marcus Reed and somebody go to purdyinsurance.com on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Taking your calls at 800 795 9565. This is The Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Today's show brought to you by Purdy Insurance, Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com. Auto, home, life, business. They cover it all. They'll do everything they can to save you money, whether it's on individual insurance packages or with bundles. They'll update. To them, customer service means everything. All at Purdy Insurance, Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com, the best in the business. And I'm in the Sunbury Motors studio. 
Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. And online at sunburymotors.com. Great new inventory. Ford, Lincoln, Kia, Hyundai, the best. Hyundai had a record-setting year, and Sunbury Motors Hyundai, a big reason why. Fabulous selection and a wide array, pre-owned inventory. All at the Sunbury Motors Guarantee. Sales staff that works with you, fabulous service department, all at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf and online at sunburymotors.com. All right. Matt has been campaigning very hard to get rid of Carson Wentz. <laughs> uh, actually, ever since they made the move, not not totally, because I, I feel like this coach can fix him, but... Uh, I, I don't know anymore because I'm just you've heard so much back and forth about this quarterback. I don't know what to believe. Well, they're on the verge of bagging him. Yes, I'm aware. So with that, let's bring in Matt Leon from Philadelphia. Matt, welcome. Great to have you with us. So what do you know or not know about Carson Wentz? Uh, I think he's not long for Philadelphia. I think it's from all the reporting and everything you read, it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when and where that he'll be uh he'll be traded and uh pretty amazing the road we've traveled to get to this point <laughs> yeah it is uh the rumors are chicago and nick Foles coming back what would you think of that yeah i uh you know i think that i saw one possible trade it was Foles, a first rounder and i believe Tariq cohen the the running back for the bears um I don't know how much, given the contract situation and everything, that's probably about as good as you can get. Uh, I mean, you know, Nick Foles has a special place in Philadelphia, regardless of what happens from here on out. Um, and I, he's the type of guy I think would be comfortable being the backup uh, behind Jalen Hurts, because uh, I can't imagine they wouldn't, you know, make Hurts the the, the starter. But uh, it would be an interesting dynamic, and, you know, it almost becomes a rite of passage. Like, every three years, Nick Foles just kind of comes back. So. Yeah, exactly. It would be the third time through for him. Uh, back in April, when the NFL held the virtual draft, and in the second round on the second day, the Eagles took Jalen Hurts, which surprised everybody. Could you have envisioned this day coming where Carson Wentz is the one that's exiting and Hurts is staying? Well, you had to figure something. And I, I know I've had this discussion with you, yeah. but somehow the same front office that gives Carson Wentz a max deal a year, year and a half later, turns around and spends a second-round pick on Jalen Hurts and then looks at everybody else like, why are you questioning this? And that same front office is going to be allowed to make the decisions going forward. See, to me, that's a... You know, you finally, right or wrong, there was a, a very odd dynamic with Wentz and Foles because Wentz got hurt and Foles won the Super Bowl. Right. Now, Wentz was a huge reason why the Eagles were in position to win the Super Bowl. Right. He was but Fi- Foles he, was he, the guy. He was Phil Simms the year that Jeff Hostetler won the Super Bowl. Right. And Foles played out of his mind in the championship game and the Super Bowl. No doubt. So it lifts, lifts him to the, you know, uh, to legendary status in Philadelphia. But Wentz was the guy. So you had this odd dynamic, and it was no, this was not Nick Foles pushing to be the starter or anything, right. but just the, the dynamic of the path. You had this weird shadow over Wentz. So then Foles goes and signs with Jacksonville at the time, and you thought, okay, you know, fair, unfair, it's Wentz's team. You know, now they'll just have a serviceable backup, which he thought was going to be Nate Sudfeld, a guy who's made millions of dollars doing not much the last few years, but they seem to like him. And then you finally cleared that hurdle, and then you turn around and spend a second round pick on Jalen Hurts, who, good, bad, indifferent, you've now started the cycle all over again. Maybe not to the degree. Because, you know, Foles was a Super Bowl winner, but now you've got a quarterback that you spent a significant, you know, draft pick on 
that any time when struggles, you have now set yourself up for the inevitable questions, would you consider hurts? Would you consider this? Would you consider that? And it was just so self-defeating. It just – and once again, I come back to how can the front office that allowed both of these things to happen still be, be the only thing that's still in place going forward mm-hmm. making decisions? The Eagles have the sixth overall pick of the draft, so let's change gears. Dude, this is a new regime. I mean, I know Howie Roseman, but it's a new head coaching staff. Do you consider drafting a quarterback, despite the, the despite the long list of needs they have? I I think the fact that we can have this discussion with a straight face is such an indictment of the front office that because you can't dismiss it out of hand, you know. They have given up so much for the quarterback position in the last five years. And the fact that we can have a talk about whether, despite all that capital and all that money dumped into that position, that you could theoretically see them go in a different direction at quarterback, it just blows the mind. I don't think so. I think, at least for the short term, they will go with Hurts and see what happens and I think you saw enough potential there the last four games that you can get excited about about the future. But it's not crazy that they could take another quarterback, and that's just nuts. <laughs> and that's the it. Eagles. Really is. That's I mean, the, think about. It. I know it's it's the Eagles yeah. in a nutshell. They spent yeah. they spent all that money on on Wentz. They spent all that money on Sudfeld, which cannot that that can't escape the conversation. They spent a lot no. of money on Sudfeld. Um, I mean, he's the Cliff Stout of the current era. And, yeah. and of course, then they draft Hurts. Well, eventually you have to spend money on him or somebody else. Uh, I mean, they got away with the Foles-Wentz thing because the two of them combined, I think, got to, what, $14, 15000000 million combined. Uh, and they could get away with it. Now they can't. Uh, I want to ask, uh, Doc Rivers the other day was incredibly complimentary of Ben Simmons. And he's been and Doc knows the guard play as well as anybody. And he was glowing about the play of Simmons uh, as a point guard. What kind of marriage is that right now between head coach and point guard? I think it's it's good, it's important. And I also think Ben Simmons is a guy that people have been drawn to focus on the negative of his game. I mean, that's kind of Sports fans these days is you don't focus on what guys can do, so, you know. But I understand the Simmons jump shooting thing is frustrating, and you know he's probably if he would just let it go, he'd probably be a fine jump shooter. But he's a special, special talent as a defender, as a facilitator, just as an overall presence on the court. So I think Doc Rivers knows how important he is to the success they're having, and will continue to have. And, uh, you know, I think the Sixers look like a team that's going to be a very difficult out in the Eastern Conference this year. And not only that, I think sometimes the best moves you make are the ones you don't make. And I think not getting James Harden was a smart move by Philadelphia. Yeah, and I never understood. I I didn't quite get – I mean, he scores a ton of points, but he also makes a ton of money. He also, you know, can – take over games and sometimes not in a good way. I just, I thought that was the case of people falling in love with the name and not seeing how it would fit. So, but well, what do I know? Just a broken down radio guy. Imagine where I am. <laughs> 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 Matt, always a pleasure. Great to have you with us. Thank you so much. Matt Leon in Philadelphia. And again, the, the supposedly the driving force in this Wentz thing's you. Well, I will say this. Even Howie is screwing up this trade for Wentz. It would just be just magnificent for him to do that, just to tie all of this together of how bad this has gotten. You mean to tell me you're going to trade your franchise quarterback? Now, this is based on the Bears deal. I don't know what they're going to do with the Colts. But you tell me you can potentially trade your franchise quarterback for Nick Foles, who I get it, is the Super Bowl hero. He always will be. But... You see that hoopla that comes with it. You saw that was part of the demise of the person you are trading. Yet you're going to bring him back to be that distraction behind Jalen Hurts. 
First of all, what sense does that make? And then second of all, Tariq Cohen. Are you kidding me? You don't need a running back right now in the backfield. You need somebody on defense. You need a lineman. You need a receiver. Tariq Cohen does Zipola for me. The only thing I like about that deal is maybe getting the 20th pick. Back with more in a moment, brought to you by Purdy Insurance on News Radio 1070 WKOK. When it comes to car buying, there's the other guy's way, and then there's the SMC way. The other guys force you into a vehicle you really don't want. The Subway Motors way lets you take the time you need to browse, ask questions, and take the test drive and think on it. For over 100 years, the Merth family and all their employees have made your experience the most pleasant one you'll ever have. The other guys won't offer you the best price for your trade, no matter how much they say they will. The SMC way is their promise to provide you with the most money the market shows your vehicle's worth. The SMC way is to offer you all assets applicable factory rebates on new vehicles and generous discounts. Looking for a pre-owned vehicle? The SMC Way checks each vehicle in a 200-mile radius to determine the lowest price, then beat it. It's the lowest price promise, just part of the SMC Way. The choice is up to you. The other guy's way or the SMC Way? The SMC Way wins every time. Sunbury Motors Company in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and at sunburymotors.com. Selling more cars and satisfying more customers for over 100 years. 503 to go. Someone has run on the field. Some guy with a brawl. And now he's not being chased. He's running down the middle of the 40. Arms in the air and a victory salute. He's pulling down his pants. Put up your pants, my man. Pull up those pants. He's being chased to the 30. He breaks a tackle from a security guard. The 20. Down the middle of the 10. The 5. He slides at the 1. And they converge on him at the goal line. Pull up your pants, take off the bra, and be a man! And the players with hands on hips at the other end of the field are looking at him and shaking their head and saying, why, oh why, is this taking place in a Super Bowl? There's nothing like Kevin Harlan calling people on the field. (laughs) I mean, he's the best at it. He's a great announcer to begin with, but he's the best at that. Phenomenal. Uh, Pedro Gomez passed away yesterday. And that was just Sh- awful. Shockingly. Oh. 58. Uh, they haven't said the reason why. They just said it was sudden. And I had a chance to meet him on a couple of occasions. First of all, knowledgeable. I mean, smart beyond words. And just a really nice guy. No ego. Just was great to talk to. Great guy to talk to. My goodness. You know, and when you look at baseball, for example, he was phenomenal. He was phenomenal at covering everything. But I thought baseball was really important because something that's really important between reporter and athlete, if you can get it, is trust. Because, look, not every story on the planet's Watergate. Okay. So if you can get trust between athlete and reporter, I think you end up getting a better story or a better chance at a story, especially the the stories that are that have a a really nice bent to them. Pedro Gomez, because he was bilingual and was bilingual in an easy way, in other words, I mean. Can, and I know this in covering the State College Spikes. I can speak some Spanish, but I'm not even sure that you would say the Spanish I speak even rises to the level of mediocre. I mean, it's not as if I haven't tried you know, a few phrases or a question I can understand and answer once in a while. I'll tell you a quick story. One time I, I said something to one of the players in Spanish. And the player got all excited and started, like, rattling off a series of sentences. I, I looked over and said, Jose, I, I pretty much kind of gave you all I had here. I, <laughs> he just started laughing, you know, because I can't do that. Well, I think we got a chance to know many of the Latin players who may not have been completely fluent in English because of Pedro Gomez, which was great. And not only that, but, I mean, look, you know, I'll take giving somebody that really, really trusted him. It was 
Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds trusted Pedro Gomez. He's just a great guy, great reporter who knew his job, knew how to do his job, and was just a super guy in doing it. Ah, I felt awful when I saw that. U.S. Olympic trials for wrestling will not be held here. But here's the caveat, and it's a good one. I know we have to wait three years, but the U.S. Olympic trials for wrestling will be here in 2024. It's so much better for the fans, this outcome, for this reason. Who knows how many people would have been allowed to go? Very few, maybe parents, maybe some coaches. So it just wasn't worth it. It just wasn't worth it. Now, by getting the assurance that you can have it here in 2024, and I I know it's going to sound a little cocky on my part, but I think we got a good chance of being able to pack fifteen or 16,000 into the Jordan Center without wearing masks and have it be like the old days. How about that in 2024? I think in three years we can have this in our rearview mirror. I know it sounds a little arrogant. Matt wants to correct me. No, I think Lawrence that's absolutely wa- fair. Lawrence wants to tell me I'm insane. <laughs> But I think we'll be able to. In fact, I wouldn't doubt we'd be able to by the end of the year. How about that? I hope so. Uh, but that works out better for the wrestling fan that in 2024 on the road to Paris, which is just three short years away, we can have the Olympic wrestling trials here. So I think in the end, it's, it's, it's so much better for the great wrestling fans in our area that you're still going to get that great tournament and you'll have a chance to attend it instead of being on the outside looking in. Uh, I just I think that that's going to turn out a lot better. I was talking to Kale Sanderson about this a few weeks ago. He said, "Yeah, it sold out in a short period of time." And I said, "Yeah, short time. How about minutes?" <laughs> and he started laughing. He said, "Yeah, Steve, you're probably right. Minutes." <laughs> oh man. So I think that worked out better. That worked out better. All right. Um, If you want, we can do this like an ESPN show and do the entire hour coming up comparing Brady to LeBron James. No? Mm, Yeah, no thanks. No. Yeah, I've taught, I I talk to my students about this all the time. I said, look, I said, I said, act like your audience has some semblance of intelligence. I said, I said, doing stupid stuff like that. And it's, to me, it's stupid. Okay. Um. Oh, you want to know what also was talked about today? First thing I see on ESPN.com, Stephen A. Colon, Mahomes' legacy already tarnished. <laughs> well, you know, some of this is some of the stuff's a setup. You know that. Oh, I know, but it's still it's just you're you're just adding fuel to the fire here of our conversation. That's all I'll say about that. I, I know, I know. It's just that's to me. That's what it comes down to. It's just there's a lot of there's a lot of setup like that. And of course, you know that's to get people riled up. And what do you mean, Mahomes? Tarnish the whole thing. I mean, you know, guys, what twenty five and what two? Something like that. Twenty five and one. Something like that. The other thing that annoyed me yesterday, Steve, and this is this is everybody, not ESPN, is can we stop with the feeling bad for the New England Patriots and their fans with Brady winning? Stop. Huh? We did that. Like there was a couple. There were. I mean, I know you don't watch the pregame show, but there were, there was a this huge video package they did of fans talking to Tom Brady how it's like oh it's like breaking up with my with a, with a long time girlfriend and wishing her luck but not really and this stop it you know how many stinking championships New England has for the football and the entire sports fan base they have zero to complain about cry me a river you can have a little heartache I'm watching your boy host another Lombardi not in a Patriot uniform get out of here
What can we do to make you happy? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, like, you've got, you've won six Super Bowls. You've been to a couple Stanley Cup finals. You won a Stanley Cup. You've won an NBA title. You've won a few World Series in this last decade. Enough. I'm worried about you. <laughs> I mean, if this were Cleveland or Buffalo or Detroit, then it's a different story. But no, we're going to give this love to the most spoiled fan base right now in sports.